Hi guys, um, I wanted to rewind basically and talk about why and how I got to the place where I got to now where I want to migrate. Basically, I wanted to move to Ghana about, let's say for the, at least the last five years. Um, I've always worked in the social care field since my degree. I studied business computing and sociology and it's just so happened that I've just stayed in the sociology kind of social side of things. So um, I think it was, yeah, about five years ago, five, six years ago that I decided, okay, I want to build a house in Ghana. So um, I bought some land um, all that time ago and I bought the land from, um, through a relative, well, a relative introduced me to a pastor and I bought the land from the pastor. You would think that it's a pastor, so, you know, man of God, he, this, 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 this would be legit, this would be cool. What happened was, is that I gave him, like, let's say, I think it was like 75% of the money. And he, after a while, he hadn't done the, the paperwork. So I was saying that once he does the paperwork, I'll give him the rest of the money. He was like, no, 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 no. So this went on for a little while. And he was like, do you know what? Um, there's now problems with the land and this, that, and the other. Just so happened that he actually sold it to someone else for a higher amount, because this went on for a good, a good, like, maybe, I don't know, about nine months. It went on for a while. And he said that, okay, well, um, he he sold it to someone, but told me that basically the person that signs for the registration papers has died and the person after them has also died so no one can sign the paperwork only once going to Ghana <coughs> I realised and I spoke to the lady that uh, was looking after the land that he brought prospective buyers around and he had sold the land so he decided that he didn't want to give me back my money so that was a case in itself and everyone said to me you know Larissa this happens in Ghana all the time so basically Leave it, leave it alone, kiss your money goodbye, you're not going to get your money back, no one in money, no one in Ghana gets their money back, so um, just forget about it. I worked hard for that money, you know, we're talking between six to ten thousand pounds, and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. So I went, you know, I had to come back to London, obviously, to go back to work. I went back to Ghana again. The man wasted my time, I paid for a ticket to go, he wasted my time. Everyone saying to me, Larissa, leave it, just call it a day, you're not going to get your money back. Uh-uh, no, no. So I, you know, carried on with it, carried on with it. And um, my cousin um, was also, you know, saying, you know, let, let's, let's basically use another angle. So um, my mum knew a solicitor. So we, I went to the solicitor and he contacted the pastor and we all sat down and told him that he needed, because it's taken long and he hasn't paid my money back, he needs to pay interest on it. And we decided that he would pay 8% interest over the term with that amount of money, it turned into a lot of money. So he was like, no, um, he didn't want to pay the money basically. He didn't want to pay the, um, he didn't want to pay the extra. So I came back to London, again, my time ran out, I came back to London, uh, my mum was like, uh, no, oh, no, this is not happening. I don't think so. So she said, come, let's go back to Ghana. We went back to Ghana to get my money back because while I was in London, his, his solicitor called me to say that he would put the money in my bank account. And I was like, uh, no, 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 I'm not putting the money in my bank account because before you know it, there'll be some other stories as to why um, the money's not there. So my mum said, you know what, let's, get, let's buy tickets and let's just go to Ghana. So we went to Ghana. Um, went to the solicitor, the pastor solicitor, and the manager says, okay, well, um, we've got your money. Do you have a, a, do a, a dollar account? Because the money's in dollars. So, um, have, do you have a, do a dollar account? If you don't have a dollar account, I can't give it to you. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Sorry? I didn't give him the money in dollars, for one. And I didn't transfer it for one. I gave it to him in cash. So, I expect my money back in cash, Thank you very much. So he was like, um, well, I can give you a check. <laughs> no, don't want no check either. So I want my money in cash. And you know, the, the solicitor was shining at me, telling me to get out of his office and this, that and the other. Imagine, after it's my money. So I was like, look, everyone, or well, everyone calm down after a while. 
me and this listen to friends now, but you know, everyone, you know, decided to calm down and they said, okay, well, if you give us like 24 hours, we'll get the cash for you and you can come and collect it. And that was that. So I got my cash in, um, in pounds sterling. So I went and I got my money in cash and he didn't pay the, um, he didn't pay the interest. But to me at that point, I was done with the situation. Just give me back my original money and we can move on. So anyway, that was that. So after that, um, is, you know, that, that, that issue, but in, in saying that as well, I lost a lot of money through obviously him taking the money, probably using it for business or whatever he used it for to come and give me the same money back like a year later. And also I had um, built a wall around the, the, the land and I put a one room on it. So that obviously cost me money, I lost it. Sometimes you have to cut your losses. So, um, I decided, okay, I needed to look for another plot of land. This, again, while I'm working, I can only take a certain amount of time off work. So I was, you know, go for two weeks, one week, two weeks, one week, and trying to look for a decent plot of land. You know, relatives were also looking, but I won't, I won't buy anything unless I see it. And that's another tip that I would give, but I'm gonna give my tips another day but um i wouldn't i wouldn't buy it unless i see it so i had to go to ghana have a look at the land certain lands they were too far um they just weren't right they weren't developed and obviously if i want to live there you know it needs to be a bit developed so um eventually which was last year easter i went to ghana um i took a sabbatical from work actually i took a sabbatical from work for six months and i went to ghana um to do with some other some family stuff but decided that that's the time i'm going to spend the time and i'm going to find a plot of land which i did one thing with ghana though you will take you could be there for six months you could be there for a year it's only when the year's ending and you need to come back is when things start rolling so when i needed to come back six months later that's when things started to roll i found a plot of land you know the man that i bought it from lovely man um, he basically owns the land in the whole area and he also gave a plot to um, Otunfuo. They're building their, um, a new university as well, which is like five minutes away from where I bought my plot of land. So that is why this apartment things come in. Basically, I want to build apartments um, because the areas as well, seems as the university is there, it's going to develop much quickly in terms of, you know, the roads, lighting, water. So um, it's, it's a, it was a good investment, but obviously, you know, it's the funds and all of that type of stuff. So um, back to my original um, song uh, that Kelly Price sang, that is how I felt when I was working. When I was working, I was in social care and obviously you're dealing, I was, I was working with young disadvantaged young ladies for a while. I was working with vulnerable females throughout the borough. I used to work for local authority throughout the borough. And we're talking hardcore, hardcore stuff would happen. You know, we're talking rape, we're talking gang, we're talking violence. And I would have to, I would have to deal with this. And on top of that, one thing I, I always say is that I would always say to my young people that, you know, you're young, you have to go out there, you have to, you know, enjoy your life and you have to do something that makes you feel happy. I'm saying this every day to my young people, but I'm here, not happy, not, not, you know, not enjoying my job, not enjoying, you know, being in London. And I, after a while, it kind of, you know, stuck with me and I'm like, you know what, you need to take your own advice and you actually need to do something. So, um, after my sabbatical, I went back to work, um, last year, but I went back for like three months and then three months later, they were talking about redundancies. I took redundancy and that I've been out of work now for, yeah, just over a year. So I've started, yeah, I took redundancy, yeah. So just over a year I've been out of work and um, enjoying every minute of it, you know. I would I would definitely recommend it, but you, I, I take risks, but I take calculated risks. I do think about things and I made sure that I was financially secure for the time that I would be out of work. So that's the main thing that you have to be financially secure in that time you don't want to leave work to go and struggle no so um that is what has brought us to the present day and i just wanted to give you guys that that background basically on why you know i wanted to leave and like kelly price said you know when something in your soul isn't right and you know you can't sleep and when you wake up in the morning you don't want to go to work i started feeling um, sick like having stomach aches in the morning and stuff like that and i thought mm -mm. 
this is not life this is not how it's supposed to be you know also going to Ghana you see that there's a much bigger world out there there's so much you know to do and stuff like that and then I would come back to my brown building in the borough of you know <laughs> I won't say what borough it was but um you know I would I would be there and then I'll speak to colleagues and colleagues you know are 45 going on 50 and saying how much they dislike their job and I thought to myself I do not want that to be me, seriously. And so that was an inspiration to me to hear those type of stories because when you've got, I don't have any children, so when you've got children, it's very difficult to, you know, just decide you're leaving your job or picking up your job, you're picking up yourself and you're going to another country. So um, I think that basically what happened is now, I just felt like now was the time for me to do it. So um, I just wanted to give you guys the background on how I've reached, you know, the decision but it hasn't been easy. It's been a long process. So I'm hoping that by me documenting my process up until I go, it will make it a bit easier for those people that want to migrate and obviously don't want to spend five years learning harsh lessons, which I learned and expensive lessons at that. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye.